Viterbi algorithm is the uh, is used to find the most probable state path. So that generated the output. It's a decoding algorithm. So let's have some execution of this algorithm with an example so that you guys should understand uh, what's going on on those uh, ugly equations. So we have those two states. For example, here in this example, we have a high GC content state. We call it as H, H for high. And we have a low GC content state. So maybe the first one is coming from coding regions. The other one is coming from non-coding regions. We recognize that there are two states. So our Q is equal to two, which is high and low. We can start from anywhere and we can start in high. The probability is 0.5 and 0.5 or half and half so it's quite fair and you can move into any directions while you are in this high states you can stay over here 50 percent of the time you can move to the low state while you are in low state you can stay there for 60 percent of the time and you can get back to state h 40 percent of the time and within each state uh, which symbols you emit your alphabet size is 4 a c g t uh, you can have A 20% of the time, C and G both 30-30 in case of the high GC content. So you can see you have higher proportion of CGs 60% of the time and again 20% uh, you can have T. While in low uh, you see that your CGs are 0.4 they sum up to or it's you can say 40%. So most of the time you observe A's and T's. So in this example, I'm putting one more thing in your uh, equation. So VL is uh, in addition to I, we have J in order to accommodate what position is it and what symbol is over there. So that is equal to ELXI. That is the emission probability or probability of seeing I in state L. Uh, this max K V K J into I minus one is the probability or the probability of most probable path ending in state K at position i minus 1 with an element j uh, don't be confused with uh, the the previous say over here so these elements can be same or they can be different sorry i should have used different symbols and this is then multiplied with akl so that is the probability of transition from state k to l we can elaborate with this example so right now we are at position number 4 and we are looking into a symbol that is A. We can put it into this equation, which was right here. So the probability of most probable path ending in state H with observation A at fourth position, while saying it's like this, while putting into the equation, it looks like this. So where we can see that VL and then we see A at fourth position. So it's since uh, we are expecting this to coming from this state H. So we have A E H O into A and maximum of any option. So right now we are in state H, but in the previous position, it can be either coming from state L or coming from state H. If it's coming from state L, so we will take its probability coming from state L. So at position number three, we observe there is another element called as C. So whether this C is coming from state L or coming from H, we can take those two probabilities, uh, multiply both of them and then this we can get the probabilities while this C was actually in state H. So that is VH into C3 and then since our this symbol at present at position number four is in H state. So we will up multiply with the probability of uh, moving from H to H or staying in the same state. So that is the transition probability over here. So as per the algorithm, we will pick up whichever gives us maximum from either this one or this one. We can compute recursively from first to the last element, the probability of most probable path. So in this way, we can work for all those symbols, all those elements in this uh, particular string. Since we are dealing with the probabilities, which are really small numbers, and uh, multiplying those small numbers with one another creates underflow errors. So you get really small numbers. So in order to avoid that, uh, there is a technique uh, where we can uh, scale them in a log scale. And most frequently, log 2 scale has been used. So these are natural numbers at the top 1 by 16. 
on log 2 scale it is minus 4 actually it's uh, when you calculate that it's 1 by um, 16 actually it is like this so that is actually your 2 raised to the power 4 so when you bring it up it becomes minus 4 in same way 1 by 8 is represented as minus 3 0 as negative infinity and so on uh, we have uh, number 16 is represented as uh, 2 raised to the power 4 so the log 2 value for that is 4 so in this way our small numbers become those whole numbers and we can multiply them but one more thing is uh, while you are multiplying the things in log scale you need to sum them up so our equation then becomes something like this so we can take those probabilities and convert them into log 2 scale now our whole numbers are like this and now let's do one more activity to understand it completely so what is the probability of this g g c a c t g a a we are starting with g so at position number one what is the probability that this g is coming from h so we take the transition probability of starting in state h so that is minus one plus we have already taken those logs so we will add those values rather than multiply them and what is the probability of uh, this g in state h so that is minus 1.737 so that is minus 2.737 same way we can calculate the probability of starting in state l for this g which is uh, minus 3.322 which is most likely obviously the ones that have the higher value since numbers are negative so minus 2.7 is the higher value so most probably it's coming from this state h let's move into one more nucleotide further what is the probability of moving or observing this uh, g at position number two uh, we can calculate for this sequence to be coming from state h with this uh, we can plug in the values and then we sum them up and in the end our number is uh, minus 5.474 same way we can calculate for this uh, position number two uh, the the possibility of getting a g over here from uh, state l so we plug in the values we pick maximum among those um, these two and our answer sums up to uh, minus 6.059 so in the end uh, what we conclude we since we are looking for the most uh, probable path we are looking for the maximum values so first possibility that is coming from state h is high so we do that the same for all nucleotides and in the end uh, we we fill in those uh, all those options so on the rows we have both the states and on the columns uh, we have our sequence so we put all those possibilities and then we put our pointers so in the end the cumulative probability is uh, minus 24.49 uh, which is ending up in for the last nucleotide to be ending up in state l and ending up in state h is uh, minus 25.65 uh, we have those pointers from where we are getting these numbers so we can trace back and in the end we can conclude that the most probable path is this so it started and stayed in h h h and then it move into l l n and the overall probability uh, of this sequence is this one so viterbi algorithm uh, is uh, used to find the most probable state path and uh, this is the decoding algorithm so in this example uh, we try to understand how it works